HCC 788 supports Girls of the Finest, a G.I. Joe costume club. Be sure to order their 2017 calendar. Proceeds to benefit the charity Canines for Warriors. Find them on Indiegogo.com. Hoodie Cole Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And last week we looked at a pretty cool figure from the 1990s. So this week I figure why don't we just stay in the 90s and see what other figures were released that decade. Oh my god, what is that? What is that? Safety. Kill it. 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 <laughs> I can't get out of it, can I? I have to review it, don't I? <laughs> okay. HCC 788 presents Lobotomax. This is Lobotomax, the Stellar Explorer released in 1994. This figure was only available in 1994. It could only be available in 1994 because the G.I. Joe toy line was canceled after that. None of the 94 figures were reissued for 1995. As you can see, Lobotomax is an alien, and aliens were introduced as part of the Star Brigade sub-team. Now, why would G.I. Joe, a military-themed toy line, have a sub-team? team called Star Brigade that is space themed. Well, we will discuss that later. Let's look at the packaging for Lobotomax. I have his full card back here, and this is how they tried to sell this thing to kids. Uh, we have some card art here, but it doesn't look uh, very much like the card art we got on earlier G.I. Joe. Uh, we have the traditional G.I. Joe logo, but it runs along the side of the card rather than the top. Uh, we have the Star Brigade logo here, so he is part of the Star Brigade subline. We have his name as Lobotomax. Max, he's the Stellar Explorer, uh, and up here we have a little logo that says Lunartix Empire. Bendable neck and tail, we'll take a look at that. Flipping the card around, we have the cross cell, some other figures that were available in the Star Brigade line, including other aliens. We have some instructions here on how to fit the figure on the figure stand. I don't think that necessarily needed instructions. Then we have this coming soon, and it has a couple of other sub-teams for G.I. Joe that probably would have been released in 1995, but they never were released because the line was canceled before then. We have Power Fighters and Manimals, and they both look terrible, and it's probably a mercy that they were never released as part of G.I. Joe. We have one flag point, and we have Lobotomax's file card, and we'll take a closer look at that later. Lobotomax takes his name from the word lobotomy, which is a surgical procedure that involves cutting away the connections to part of the brain. And that sounds about right. I don't think there was ever a more aptly named action figure. Let's take a look at Lobotomax's accessories, and again, we are dealing with one of those 90s accessories trees, and you already know how I feel about these. I really hate them. They're really lazy. Uh, all of his accessories came on this tree, and you were meant to pop them out yourself. Uh, that meant that they were all the same color, uh, this sort of Dijon mustard yellow. Also, none of the accessories are original. They were all reissued with other action figures, and some of these accessories got reissued many times. This laser pistol is a reissue of the laser pistol that came with the 1988 Iron Grenadier. Iron Grenadier is going to hang out with me while I look at the other accessories just because Iron Grenadier is a better action figure and I'd rather look at him. This laser rifle is reissued from the 1989 DJ. It's a very science fiction looking weapon. It has some nice details. This is the kind of weapon you'd expect to come with a space alien. This laser gun he has in his hand is a reissue of 
was a gun that came with Sci-Fi version 2. Now, Sci-Fi's gun was connected to a backpack uh, with a standard black hose that connected to this little knob on the end. Well, the knob is still there, but Lobotomax did not have anything to connect to it. Then we have this submachine gun, because of course a space alien would have a submachine gun. This submachine gun is a reissue of the submachine gun that came with the 1988 Voltar. I'm going to keep Voltar around too. I need plenty of help to get through this. We have Lobotomax's second submachine gun, and this submachine gun is a reissue of the submachine gun that came with the 1989 Snake Eyes version 3. This submachine gun looks like a modified Uzi, and Uzi is an Israeli submachine gun. How would an alien get an Uzi in outer space? I have to assume this Uzi is made by Jews in space? In Jews are in space. Thanks again, Mel. As always, you're the greatest. I'm keeping Snake Eyes around for the rest of this segment, too. It's just such a relief to look at good action figures. Now we have this knife, this lightning bolt-shaped knife, and this is a reissue of the knife that came with the 1988 Hydro Viper. Finally, we have the figure stand, which was standard on a lot of 1990s figures, and normally that was a good thing, but Lobotomax is a figure that does not need a figure stand. He stands perfectly well without one. So if you're short on figure stands, you can use this for a different action figure. Let's take a look at the articulation on Lobotomax. He did not have the standard articulation of G.I. Joe figures of any year. He did have that bendable neck as advertised on the card. It does not bend very easily, and I don't know if that's just, you know, 30 years of age on the plastic that makes it really stiff, or if it was like this, you know, when it first came out, but it does not bend very easily. Uh, you had standard articulation at the arm, uh, standard G.I. Joe articulations. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder. He could swivel at the shoulder, but his uh, his left shoulder is obstructed by this shoulder thing here. Uh, his right shoulder, though, will swivel all the way around. Uh, you had, of course, the hinge at the elbow and the uh, swivel at the bicep. This was not an O-ring figure, so there's no articulation uh, at the waist or the torso. You could move his legs at the hip a bit, and you could bend at the knee, but the legs actually get in their own way, bending at the knee. Uh, and then, of course, you had the bendable tail, which is just as stiff as that neck. Let's take a look at the sculpted design and color of Lobotomax, starting with his head. And his head is at the end of that long neck, and you actually have to bend the neck forward in order to see his head. Uh, you, then you can see those eyes and those fangs around his mouth and that exposed brain. Wait a minute. Hold on here. That's not a brain. That's a scrotum. That's a scrotum. That is exactly what that is. Don't pretend that isn't what that is. You can see what that is. They sculpted a scrotum on the head of this figure. That is just so disgusting. These were grown adults who produced this toy. They knew what they were doing. Look, it even hangs over the neck a little bit. Ooh. Oh. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, I gotta get a chair. I gotta sit down. Oh, sorry guys. Oh, I just I just gotta sit down for a minute. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. oh, I've never given up on a review. I've reviewed Cobra Law. I've reviewed Ice Cream Soldier. I can do this. I can do this. Ooh. Okay, let's keep going. Then we have that elongated neck, and it has some sculpted veins on it, and midway down the neck it has a couple more black eyes. This is really gross. Let's move on. We have a chest that has a vest and some sculpted details, some straps, a belt, and some pouches. Uh, that's all in bronze. And then we have this one shoulder pad that sticks out really far here because, of course, all space uniforms have to be asymmetrical. We have some green veiny arms and a couple arm bands, and we have hands with three fingers on each hand, and there are claws on the fingers, and those are pretty well sculpted. I can't argue with that. Let's move on to his legs, and Lobotomax does not wear pants because pants are for humanoids. His legs are green and veiny like the rest of his body. Uh, he has a couple straps on his thighs that are in bronze. He has a canister on this side, some kind of gadget on this side. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Uh, then, of course, he has two feet on each leg. These feet are sculpted well enough, I guess. I think it's funny that they put a foothold on each foot as if you would need that. Unfortunately, the way the feet are shaped, they can interfere with each other. They can bump against each other. 
other. And of course, if you want to bend one knee, his back toe runs square into his other knee. Great design there, guys. Finally, we get to the tail, and oh my god, it's long and veiny. This goes right along with the scrotum head, and yes, he has a fist at the end of it. Oh, ah. Uh. Sorry, sorry. Lunch was backing up again. Oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. And yes, he can hold a gun in his tail fist, if that's important to you. So maybe you were on the fence about this figure, but the fact that he can hold a gun in his tail fist, that just sells it. Let's take a look at the file card. We are mercifully near the end, folks. We're gonna make it. By 1994, they were shrinking down the traditional file cards into about baseball card size. In fact, they're not even called file cards anymore. It says G.I. Joe trading card to clip and collect. It has his name as Lobotomax, and the card points out some features on the action figure, including the bulging eyeballs, the bounty hunter battle suit, bounty hunters don't have to wear pants, and the powerful terror tail. Well, it is terrible. For some reason, they started numbering the action figures. I'm not sure what the point of that was. You didn't have to buy them in any particular order, but Lobotomax was number 50. His code name is Lobotomax. That's kind of redundant. It says Lobotomax down here. He's the Stellar Explorer, birthplace Morris Sector 5, Planet at Zog. Shut up. Primary military specialty bounty hunter. Secondary military specialty alien annihilator. What? No pay grade? This paragraph down here says, a friend to no one. Lobotomax hates humanoids and fellow Lunartics aliens alike. Lunartics sounds like lunatics. The creators are just taking the piss now. They're barely even disguising their apathy. Proud of his bounty hunter reputation, he is known throughout the cosmos as one of the most unmerciful creatures ever hatched. His monstrous tail can disable enemies in one powerful whack. That's right, he whacks his tail. It's a tallywhacker, if you will. Seldom does prey escape a bite from his venomous fangs. Unfortunately for him, his intelligence is extremely limited due to the loss of brain tissue suffered when the top of his skull was sliced off during a laser saber duel with Predacon. So Lobotomax has literally had a lobotomy. The file card references Predacon, which is this guy up here, if you care, which you probably don't, and you shouldn't. It's easy easy to talk about the G.I. Joe media appearances for Lobotomax because there aren't any. He appeared in neither the G.I. Joe animated series nor the G.I. Joe comic book. That's probably a good thing. I mean, imagine what the animation would have looked like with this guy, with the scrotum head and the veiny neck and tail. How would you get that past the censors? Looking at this figure overall, kill it, kill it, kill it. Kill it. Clearly a lot of work went into this action figure, and the designers intentionally made it look disgusting. Well, mission accomplished, guys. The elongated neck and tail are veiny and phallic, and that brain on his head is not a brain. Now, don't go in the comments section saying, oh, it's a brain, you just have your mind in the gutter. It's not a brain, you know what that is. I think the designers of this figure cared so little about it that they made a dirty joke out of it. They thought we wouldn't notice we noticed. So why are there aliens in G.I. Joe? How did this Star Brigade sub-team come about? That was the question we asked earlier that we need to come back and answer now. We don't have to speculate. We know the reasons why. And we know because Hasbro executives from back at that time have talked about their rationale for including these things in the G.I. Joe line. I'm not calling out anyone in particular. This was a team effort and when they made good decisions for G.I. Joe, we have applaud the whole team. Well, we've got to give them the same treatment when they make decisions that turned out to not be so good. So, why Star Brigade? Why are there aliens in G.I. Joe? The reason is the Hasbro executives got wind of a rumor that Kenner was going to start reissuing Star Wars toys. And the go-getters that they were, Hasbro execs decided that they were going to attack their competitor at what they considered their weakest point. They were going to jump the gun and get their own alien action figures into the market first. After more than a decade of producing G.I. Joe toys, Hasbro was starting to feel the pressure from other toy lines like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers, and rather than come up with a new toy
toy line that would be their answer to those other competing toy lines, they came up with ideas and just dumped them all into G.I. Joe because G.I. Joe already had the retail shelf space. Hindsight is 2020, of course, but looking back at it, it should have been obvious that this was not a good idea. I mean, you can't compete with Star Wars by just producing your own alien toys. Uh, Star Wars had alien action figures because those aliens were connected to the blockbuster movie, maybe you heard of it. So for kids, these Star Wars aliens had a connection to the universe that they occupied, as seen in the Star Wars movies. These G.I. Joe aliens had none of that. Besides which, you can't beat Star Wars by trying to out Star Wars Star Wars. That's not attacking your competitor at their weakest point, it's attacking at their strongest point. What kills me about this rationale is there was a time when G.I. Joe did attack Star Wars at their weakest point and beat the hell out of them. That was in 1982, and that weak point was articulation. Vintage Star Wars figures are stiff-armed, stiff-legged mannequins, so when G.I. Joe figures came out, they had articulation that blew Star Wars away, and Star Wars just couldn't compete in that area. That's how you attack your competitor at the weak point. So Lobotomax is nauseating, there should not be aliens in G.I. Joe, and even if you love these aliens, you think these aliens are the greatest figures ever made, well fine, you can have your aliens, but they don't need to be in the G.I. Joe toy line. The aliens don't gain anything by being connected to G.I. Joe, and G.I. Joe does not gain anything by being connected to these aliens. I wasn't fully aware of these aliens when I first started collecting G.I. Joe as an adult. I thought that Cobra Law was the only part of G.I. Joe that I truly hated, but I hate these guys! And it never fails, someone always comments, hey, that's my favorite guy, I love that action figure, that reminds me of my uncle, he had a scrotum on his head too. And if that's the case, that's great, and I really mean that. If you found something that gives you joy and happiness in life, hold on to that. Some guy on the internet should not be able to dissuade you from that, but I don't have to agree with that. You don't have to agree with me, but I don't have to agree with you either. So, Lobotomax, bottom tier nauseating, and feels like an insult to children everywhere. But wait, we have a new segment on this show. It's called, What Does Mrs. Hooded Cobra Commander Think? Let's find out. <laughs> so that leaves just one thing left to do. Oh, Dark One, I summon you to place your icy fingers on this- Wait a minute. Huh? I don't want that guy down here. Once you have one, before you know it, you'll have a whole infestation of them. You're on your own. Oh. So I guess that means I have to live with this thing as part of the G.I. Joe toy line, whether I like it or not. Nope. Kill it! I reloaded! All right, this figure, rem this figure reminds me of a joke that I think Al Franken told. Um, and it, it goes something like this. Um, there's a guy, he's got a red dot on his forehead. And he can't get rid of it. He goes to the doctor. And the doctor, you know, says, okay, we'll take it out. We'll, we'll do some tests. You know, come back tomorrow. The guy comes back the next day, still has the red dot on his forehead. And the doctor says, you know, we've run our tests and, and we know what it is. Uh, you have a penis growing out of your forehead. The guy says, no way, it's just a red dot. Are you sure? And the doctor says, yeah, yeah, we're sure. It's, it'll, get, it'll get a little bigger each day, and in a couple months, you'll have a full penis growing out of your forehead. It's, it's irreversible. It's a very rare condition, a very rare disease, but we're certain that's what it is. And the guy says, oh, my God, I can't believe this. I'm going to wake up each morning, look in the mirror, and see a penis on my forehead. And the doctor says, oh, no, you won't see it. The balls will cover your eyes. Ha, 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 ha.